Welcome to the Restituto Orbis channel, and today we're going to be exploring the Hoover Dam. The exploration of the Hoover Dam is going to complete our initial look at the so-called Great American Monuments or Structures. We looked at the Statue of Liberty in the East, we looked at Mount Rushmore in the Midwest, or the West, depending on your perspective, and now we're going to look at the Hoover Dam in the West, or vicinity of the Mojave Desert, near Las Vegas. The Hoover Dam warrants our attention because of its construction timeline. We're going to look at specific details about it, but initially we're just going to take the glance of the Hoover Dam that many people do when they're on tourism in Nevada. When you look at the Hoover Dam, you see that this is a very impressive structure. Would you be surprised to know, though, that the Hoover Dam is actually considered an Art Deco construction? Of course, the other aspect about it is that it was built during the Great Depression, and right now we're simply relaying what is generally well known about the dam. We're also told that because of its tremendous power supply capabilities, it supplies power to Nevada, Arizona, but primarily California, which takes the majority of its power. It depends on what source you look at, and you'll get different accounts in terms of its actual power supply percentages to the states. Yes, no one ever would have thought that it would supply the great state of California, where they decided, so we're told, to build a city in the middle of a desert, that being Los Angeles, as we know the Los Angeles Basin is quite an arid area. Looking at some of the images, though, of the exterior and the interior, we see a tremendously impressive edifice. And indeed, the dam, and I'll try to resist the urge to make dam puns, uh, so much for that. But the dam was designed to provide power, we're told, and it was built during the Great Depression. Yes, another tremendous construction achievement during the Great Depression, because as we know, the United States government, at least, still had unlimited financial resources to conduct whatever projects that it needed to conduct. And for many people, this is the simple explanation for why many of these wondrous edifices were completed on rather short timelines and during the Great Depression. It also explains why the United States was able to quickly shift its focus from the Great Depression to the industrialization of the Second World War by becoming the quote-unquote arsenal for democracy. Many of these images, though, show a very romantic, arid landscape which the dam fills. And you can see that the bypass bridge that we started the video on gives you an idea of how easily you could miss this very impressive structure. Much as with many of the interstates would allow you to miss other wondrous old world structures such as the Iowa State Capitol or the Cathedral or Basilica in St. Paul and Minneapolis respectively because you're speeding along on the highway and you don't bother to look right to actually see the dam or left depending on which way you're going. I always found Lake Mead and the surrounding area in Nevada very impressive, though, because it seems to have more indications with its existence. The dam is extremely unique because of the fact that when it was completed, we're told it was one of the largest dams in the world, and we'll look at the official account after we look at these exterior images. But what are your thoughts when you glance on these exterior images of this Art Deco masterpiece from the 1930s? Yes, a dam that was constructed to be an Art Deco masterpiece, and here I show the different lighting on the dam, and when you consider how the sunlight changes, and then you compare that with the artificial lighting that's provided, what kind of visuals does it give you of this impressive structure? And looking at the overall structure of the dam itself, and of course we all are told that this was all constructed with poured concrete, and we'll take a look at construction photos in a moment. It's very easy to realize, though, that this dam did cost many lives, and whether it was something that was constructed exactly as we're told, or it was something that may have had a little bit more to it than what we realize. And oddly enough, we'll even see that in the official account, which raises questions. It's an impressive structure, and the terrain is rather beautiful around it, at least when you're looking at it, although when you're actually there in Nevada or in the Mojave Desert, you can't help but notice how unrealistically dry it is. It's as though you're standing under a hot air dryer at all times. I'm always amazed at the ability that we had, or at least were informed that we had, to lay out such a structure like this. And remember, it's not just the exterior, it's always the interior. And especially when we come to Art Deco buildings, we tend to get an idea of the size and immensity, but then also the fine detailing that went into constructing such an interior. And while the Art Deco aspects of the dam may not be readily visible just looking at the exterior, aside from some of the towers that we see that are in the reservoir area, when you look in the interior of the dam, it actually provides many different touches of Art Deco. So quite an intriguing structure overall. Intriguing in terms of its construction timeline, 
the wonderful visuals that you look at. And there's a reason I'm doing this video a little bit differently because I believe to fully appreciate this particular structure, you have to see it in live action. And it will certainly give a comparison in terms of how large and give you an idea with the scale in terms of some of the other structures that we've looked at. It'll also make the official figures bounce out a little bit more. This is the bypass that they built, so you could just simply drive right past the dam without really looking at it. And, of course, we're told that this is for security reasons. And, indeed, it's also for security reasons that there are many areas of the dam that you can't access to this day where you can see some of the Art Deco images that we will share later. Although, fortunately, we still have photographs purportedly from within the dam that will show this. Interestingly enough, this uh, dam, we're told, was a long-term construction project, although actually pulling off the final construction of it didn't take long, as you might think. There's always many different challenges that we don't realize when it comes to building a dam, and you consider what an engineering marvel that this is. The other thing I find surprising, ah, uh, look at that, U.S. Department of the Interior, Bureau of Reclamation. Bureau of Reclamation? Hmm. We have so many bureaus in our wonderful United States government. What a name, though. Bureau of Reclamation. What exactly are they reclaiming? Is it natural resources? Is it energy? Or is it something else? The dam has appeared in many other fictional accounts as well, even in that, well, less than stellar Transformers movie from the 2000s, where we're told that the dam was built to house the Allspark. Yes, it's very sad that I actually know that without referencing it. I myself prefer the original animated Transformers movie from the mid-1980s, but I'm sure you'll find that is no surprise. Back to the Hoover Dam, though, you can see it in different visuals just how complex the layout of it was. What kind of structural detailing and preparation of the terrain did they have to do? How much digging and excavation needed to be completed before they could actually begin to pour concrete, according to the official account? And what exactly was the whole purpose behind it? Of course, we'll be told that during the Great Depression, they needed to provide jobs. And that seems sensible enough on the surface, but why exactly were they not building dams in every state? We certainly had rivers in every state. Why is it they didn't find any good dam site in every state across the Union and simply construct a dam? Imagine how many jobs you would have created. And we're also told that the Hoover Dam has paid for itself over time. So you could achieve that in other states as well as well. Let's take a look at what our friends at the Bureau of Reclamation tell us about the Hoover Dam and the official facts that we have. Again, such an interesting name, Bureau of Reclamation. You think they'd call it the Bureau of Dams or something like that. So the Hoover Dam, where is it? Black Canyon spinning the Colorado River between Arizona and Nevada. And yes, I say spinning rather than spanning because it does seem to be spinning. About 30 miles southeast of Las Vegas, Nevada. How tall is it? 726 feet from Foundation Rock to the roadway. The towers and ornaments on the parapet rise 40 feet above the crest. Amazing that they know exactly how much it weighs. 6,600,000 tons. What kind of dam is it? A concrete arch gravity type. Very intriguing. Also, they don't mention that it's an Art Deco styling, but we'll see that in a little bit. What's the maximum water pressure at the base of the dam? 45,000 pounds per square foot. Very impressive. I'm always reminded of the transparent aluminum that they used in Star Trek IV to solve the problem of building a whale tank on the captured Klingon bird of prey. Yes, I slipped in a Star Trek reference. How much concrete is in the dam? Three and one quarter million cubic yards. Now here's where it gets intriguing. The first concrete for the dam was placed June 6, 1933, and the last on May 29, 1935, so really not all that long to construct it, just shy of two years. Approximately 160,000 cubic yards of concrete were placed in the dam per month. Very impressive achievement. How much cement was required? Now here's where it gets really interesting. More than 5 million barrels. The daily demand during construction of the dam was from 7,500 to 10,800 barrels. Reclamation had used only 5,862,000 barrels in its 27 years of construction activity preceding June 30th, 1932. Wait a minute. What exactly are they saying here? That there was construction that was going on prior to 1932? I mean, that's what this sentence seems to indicate to me. What are your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comments. And I'm willing to accept second and third hand sources of information for this particular exploration. If you have a grandfather or relative who worked on this dam, let me know. Well, it's really the story behind this. Reclamation had used only 5 million barrels in the 27 years of construction activity preceding June 30th, 1932. Once again, it seems like we have a conflicting account here. 
What was an unusual feature of the Hoover Dam's construction? The dam was built in vertical columns of blocks, and we see an image of it over here. That varied in size from about 60 feet square at the upstream face of the dam to about 25 feet square at the downstream face. An estimated 215 blocks make up the dam. So very impressive, and yet in most of the images we have many other questions that we would ask. What were the principal items of work? More than 5,500,000 cubic yards of material were excavated and another 1 million cubic yards of earth and rock fill placed. By feature, this included excavation. So we have 1.5 million cubic yards for the diversion tunnels. For the foundation of the dam, 1.7 million cubic yards. For spillways and inclined tunnels, 750,000 cubic yards. So we're moving a lot of dirt here. Well, perhaps they just should have called the good people of Seattle since they had a lot of experience with regrading and moving hills, and the good people of Boston who were able to do it long before heavy machinery was even invented. What were the qualities of principal materials used in the dam? The principal materials, we have reinforcement steel, 45 million pounds, gates and valves, 21 million pounds, plate steel and outlet pipes, 88 million pounds. Just throwing these numbers about at this infinite amount of material as though it was really no issue, and perhaps it wasn't. Perhaps during the Great Depression, they had great logistical planning. They just had some rather questionable aspects about uh, how they documented this, especially in the fact that we have no chronological record of photos. What construction work was necessary before operation started at the dam site? Again, they constructed Boulder City to house both government and contractor employees. Well, why not? You need to build a city before you can build a dam, and you can go to Boulder City to this day. They've got a really nice breakfast cafe there. Construction of seven miles of 22-foot wide asphalt-surfaced highway. So build a city, build a highway. Easy. Construction of a 222-mile-long power transmission line from San Bernardino, California, which it should be noted, Southern California is the main target of the power that this dam produces, to the dam site to supply energy for construction, and then ultimately to supply energy to Southern California. That still needs it to this day. At least that's what we're told officially. Well, let's take a look at some of the images that we have of the dam construction in the interior. The images that we see show a very tremendous and impressive layout with a large volume of space. And indeed, this does conform with the report that we had with the amount of excavated material. Yet these images paint many different pictures and perceptions that we could have of the construction of this very impressive edifice. Now, as I said earlier, there's no doubt that many lives were lost in either the construction or perhaps the re-establishment of this particular dam. Or perhaps I should use the word reclamation. Why, again, is it the Bureau of Reclamation? And isn't it intriguing that we even have a Bureau of Reclamation? I mean, if it's supposed to be about the conservation of natural resources, call it the Bureau of Conservation of Natural Resources. It's also odd to me that, once again, we don't have a very well chronologically ordered account of the construction of this impressive edifice. Once again, we're to believe that we had the ability to plan out and execute the construction of this very complicated dam, and yet, for whatever reason, we could not properly organize a true, well-documented account, where we have images, video, and everything that's in chronological order. I mean, I can certainly say that one of my favorite examples, the 801 Grand Building in Des Moines, Iowa, can actually find time-lapse video that shows it being constructed over two years. I also saw it, so it's not to say that I don't believe that we could have constructed this particular edifice. I just find the account very problematic. And maybe we could just say that's because of limitations in the records, or it goes down to that old conflicted account that, yes, we don't want to disrespect our ancestors in the past because they could achieve these great things. They just didn't document them very well. You know, we hadn't figured out the internet yet. We didn't have the ability to store and archive records. We had them move from one building to the next. And then, of course, those buildings tended to burn down for various reasons unknown, or somebody dropping a cigarette or being irresponsible in the basement of said building. We do see in the images, though, some of the heavy equipment that was used in the construction, reclamation of the dam, as we'll say. And it does give us clues, though, that there was a lot of effort that was put into this. And as I said, I had no doubt that there were lives that were lost in this effort. Now, I'm certainly welcoming any of you to share the information that you have about the Hoover Dam in the comments. Once again, it's another project that occurred during the Great Depression. And, of course, the governments always have money, no matter what the economic situation is. And, of course, that's never questionable because, as we know, in most of the government establishment charters across the land, they have the ability to simply create finances or supposedly direct them. Now, we're not going to get into a complicated assessment of money. We're simply talking about the proposed difficulty of the financial situation. 
We're also told that this dam was a long considered project in the state of Nevada. And yet at the same time, they decide to actually execute it. And by the way, they built this during the same time frame that they were building Mount Rushmore in South Dakota during a time of greatest economic hardship in the nation's history. Indeed, this image here shows us how they supposedly poured the concrete in these large cavern areas or these large blocks that they built with framework. Isn't it interesting, though, how that always seems to be the account? They build these large blocks, they frame them, and then they pour the concrete in them. I'm not questioning that. I'm merely saying that seems to be a very well-known and used technique of construction. And it does make a lot of sense from many different perspectives. Do you see any issues with some of the images that we're looking at? Is there anything questionable or does it seem to line up? Again, the biggest point of concern that I have is just the fact that we don't have a nice, well-ordered chronological account. Perhaps there's one out there. I was almost expecting to see on the Bureau of Reclamation site a simple video with images and actual video because, you know, we did have the ability to take video in the 1930s, even the early 1930s, that would document this colossal project. You would think that the completion of this dam would certainly be national news. We're told that it was. But would the people who were suffering the effects of the Great Depression, who were working the fields in California, since many of them came from the Midwest during the Dust Bowl, I'd even received a question in terms of how accurate I think the Dust Bowl was. Well, the Dust Bowl is probably what we're told it was, but the causes behind it are certainly up for debate. Ah, there's the great man himself, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, pointing at the dam and being assisted by his aide because, as we know, he was confined to a wheelchair. But yet, through the good use of photography and video, a lot of people aren't even aware of that little historical fact. Is it a historical fact? I don't know. It's safe to say, though, that Franklin D. Roosevelt was elected president four times and no one else has shared or will ever share that distinction in the United States. Here's the construction of the bypass bridge. Again, we're told that the whole reason that this occurred was for security purposes. We also have the wonderful account of all the individuals who came to work on this dam out in the middle of the desert. And I'm always intrigued by the fact that we have all these accounts of these wondrous engineering projects that just happen to really be out in the middle of nowhere. And everyone will tell you that the Mojave is the middle of nowhere. There's a reason why there's some of the largest United States military bases that just happen to be west of Las Vegas in the Mojave. And you'll have the major branches represented, minus the Coast Guard, of course, but who knows. There could be a Coast Guard station on Mono Lake way up there in California. I'll stop joking. The thing about the images, though, is we do get an idea of the colossal effort of construction that went into this. We also see some of the machinery that was available and the heavy machinery that was available. What I find intriguing about that is we consider the amazing buildings that we had built, name any state capital that was built in the 1800s, whichever one that we've looked at in the past, and you have to compare and contrast that with this construction of the dam. The other aspect of the Hoover Dam that I find interesting, oh, isn't this nice, all these dignitaries riding around here in this particular piece of construction. Yes, isn't it a fine time to be riding around looking at this marvelous dam? We do have some intriguing plans of the dam, although I have to say some of the schematics that we have seem to create more questions. There are some very fine details with it. And yet, in other aspects, there seem to be things that are hand-waved. And, of course, the reason we'll get for that, again, is security concerns. This is a major piece of infrastructure. This is critical to power supplies for the southwestern United States, and nobody debates that. And yet, at the same time, there's so many questionable accounts with this particular dam. And you can see that with the effort of construction that went into it, it would make a little bit of sense, especially in the 1930s, that if there was something out there that they decided to reclaim, Perhaps that would be the time to do it. And indeed, it seems as though the 1930s really was a time of reclamation. So perhaps this Bureau of Reclamation could have been more active than we truly realized. In addition to all the other wondrous government programs that were going on during the 1930s, which were told were essential for our survival. And if you were an individual who questioned these particular government programs, well, you tend to be ostracized in any manner of ways, whether you're a military officer or you were involved with a corporation, a politician, or in any way, shape, or form. It seems as though they did a very good job of creating a consensus in the 1930s, despite the economic hardships. Some of the other images that we have, though, show the cavernous construction and all the amount of material that was allegedly being moved. Of course, we can always say that many of these images, are we really sure that this is from the exact site that we're looking at? I'm not questioning that. I'm just saying, how can we absolutely verify, unless we were really there? The 
interesting images that we have though that show the fine-tuned construction of the dam itself always create more questions with how they actually poured the concrete. I would certainly love to see some more photographs that show the actual pouring of the concrete. We're told that was a very arduous process and indeed that's where many of the individuals who unfortunately lost their lives in the construction or reclamation of this dam where that happened. Now let's transition to look at some of the interior images and remember we're told that this dam is Art Deco, although a lot of people aren't aware of that and I certainly had no idea that the Hoover Dam was actually Art Deco. Yet you have these interesting, almost dare I say angelic figures that greet you when you arrive at the dam. We're told that there was some sculptor that was involved in this, but once again these seem to line up with what we think of as Art Deco. You also consider the numerous accounts of how this dam appears in many different video game franchises in the aforementioned Transformers franchise. It is a very well-known landmark. And yet, not many people are aware of the fact that on the inside you have some very intriguing symbols, which always seems to accompany anything that we see that's labeled as Art Deco construction. Yet, oddly enough, the symbols aren't traditionally what we think of as the classic American symbols. Just getting an idea, though, of the size and scope of these generators, and we also have to look at other dams, because we did come across the Keokuk power plant back in Iowa, which at the time was the largest dam. And here's an example of one of the initial symbols. Very odd. This is not exactly a symbol that we consider representative of the United States. You would think this being the 1930s and everything being under such hardship with the Great Depression, we'd want to have some more recognizable American symbols. You know, the wings of liberty that never lose a feather, and instead we have this very interesting, I don't know, dare I say diamond or unique uh, design. We also have these strange angelic figures. I mean, are these to represent the spirit of America persevering during the times of economic hardship with the Great Depression? Turn to the government, the New Deal will save you. I mean, is that what it's supposed to represent? Very odd, very strange, because these aren't symbols that we tend to see in other locations unless we're looking at Art Deco. The other interesting aspect about some of the symbols that you see, such as this one, is that while it seems to be on a very well-built, is this a granite floor, is this the concrete, not sure, is this some other advanced polymer, I don't know, you can't access a lot of these symbols because, as we said, a lot of portions of the dam are closed off. Just looking at some of the scale, though, of the interior construction, and once again, I know you're going to be surprised, we have virtually no images that show the interior construction. You just really don't need to see those, because if you have exterior photos, you can simply assume that everything went off on the inside. That seems to be a recurring theme that we have in these explorations. The other dizzying aspect with looking at the interior of the dam is you see some of the complexities. Now, some people may say that we have interior construction photos. Wait a minute. What is that? Is that the glaive there from Kroll with a big maze or labyrinth around it? And we can get some of the impressions of the Art Deco construction with the unique symbols. And indeed, in other reliefs that you see across the dam, you'll see the usual array of symbols that don't tend to make a lot of sense, at least from our direct perspective. Look at that, the power individual there flexing the muscles. And once again, we have another idealized human individual depicted here. They died to make the desert bloom. <laughs> well, maybe it should say, they died to make Southern California bloom. And I don't say that with any sort of disregard for the needs of the individuals in Southern California. It's just intriguing to me that we have this dam in Nevada, but it supplies power to all the Southwest. And again, I'm asking why not just build more dams in the other states? They could have created more jobs and then the dams could have paid for themselves by the power that they produced. But I don't know. It's just, just a question for me. You know, I'm not in government. I'm not a politician and I'm certainly not representing any corporate interest. But look again at the elevator here and we see this same Art Deco. And that's the aspect that you'll tend to miss if you don't really get on the inside of the dam. And it's challenging to look at the inside of the dam because of security concerns. We have these large caverns and passageways, and we also mix this with the symbols that we see that paint a different picture than what our initial impressions might be of the dam. For example, here we have a sprocket with a very intriguing symbol all around it. Now, of course, we have the usual artwork explanation behind this, and that was the very crux of Art Deco, or so we're told. There's also the aspect that a lot of these symbols are still in the dam, but you can't actually access it. You can only access it in one of the tourism-only areas. Very interesting. So is that really what's in the dam, or is that just what we're being shown that we're supposed to believe is there? Whatever the case, these symbols are very unique, and they seem to give a different account than what initial impressions would give of the dam.
And if you ever get to travel to visit the Hoover Dam in person, and I recommend it even with the arid climate of Southern Nevada (laughs) and Southern California, you'll find that you'll have many more questions. Even just looking at the exterior of the dam from any perspective, it creates many more questions. Because it goes back to the question of if we were capable of doing this during the greatest time of economic hardship in the United States history, why didn't we build more dams? In fact, why aren't we building more dams now? We're told that the United States economy has done exceptionally well despite the challenges of the early 2020s. And now that the United States economy has recovered and we're told that we have power shortfalls, we have infrastructure shortfalls, why don't we just simply build more dams? We could create more jobs. We could even put really cool symbols all over the dams and cause other questions. But for some unknown reason, we just don't do this. And there's a variety of explanations for why we don't. We don't have the political will to do it. We just don't desire to do it. We have too many safety standards. Or we have other expenses that we have to attend to. I won't even say anything about the conflicts that we're supporting, whether it's materially or financially, or in all cases, both as it tends to be. But how was it that during the time of greatest economic hardship the United States has ever faced, it managed to complete, in a very short amount of time, an impressive work of infrastructure? An impressive work of infrastructure with wondrous and inspiring Art Deco decorations, maybe that's what Art Deco really is, Deco decorations, inside and outside of the Hoover Dam. What are your thoughts of the Hoover Dam? And by all means, let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you for joining me. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank <laughs> you.